There's this hormone that is rarely discussed. No, it's not insulin, it's not cortisol, none of the typical hormones that we discuss, but it's produced by many cells of our body. And there's a recent massive study that implicates it in having many longevity promoting effects in the body. So I'd like to show you some wickedly impressive science on how it works and how we can take advantage of the science to apply it to increase the hormone in our own body naturally. So no injections, no drugs, not even a supplement. Oh, before we get started, I'm about to get into some heavy molecular and cell biology and physiology. So if you're a person who doesn't care about the details, just want the overall conclusion, you can skip to the main points section at the end of this video. For my people, the nerds, buckle in. Let's get going. The hormone is FGF21, also known as fibroblast growth factor 21. And the researchers from this study wanted to investigate what FGF21 does to the body, because there are several other studies that individually point to it having a longevity effect. So to investigate, the researchers did a series of experiments in mice. Don't worry, there are studies in humans too that we'll get into. In mice, they were able to generate FGF21 knockout mice, as well as an inducible FGF21 expression. That means for the FGF21 knockout group, the researchers knocked out or eliminated the ability for the cells of the body to read or express the FGF21 gene. In this case, we have the FGF21 gene and the researchers have added a linear DNA sequence that mimics the FGF21 gene, but it is missing a critical piece of the gene that allows it to be recognized by the gene reading machinery inside the cells, known as the RNA polymerase and some other enzymes. So the cell recognizing the fake FGF21 gene will integrate it into its DNA using its natural mechanisms called homologous recombination. Now in essence, the cell gets fooled into swapping out the functional FGF21 gene for the broken one, disallowing FGF21 from being produced. Pretty freaking cool, right? And as for the inducible FGF21 group, that's a group with an extra FGF21 gene, but it's inducible, meaning that it has a region on the gene that activates it, meaning that when the mice are fed a particular inducible molecule, in this case, doxycycline, the molecule binds that region of the gene and allows the gene reading machinery to read and produce the extra FGF21. So naturally, these mice produce more than normal. Okay, I realized that was a lot, but it's going to actually be important to understand the experiments that we're going over. Now we have our groups to the data. Here, we're looking at blood FGF21 levels. This is important because if you, well, genetically knock out FGF21, it's a bit of a nasty shock if you suddenly saw FGF21 in the blood, right? Well, have no fear because we can see the FGF21 knockout leads to no FGF21 produced. And the TG condition there is the inducible FGF21. So there's a knockout of the original gene and a maintenance of the inducible. The WT there is the control condition, the unmanipulated group. So they have all their genes intact. Okay, good, the study design worked. Now let's cut to the main punchline and then let's get into some additional, more fascinating findings. Do these animals live longer, so longevity, here we see the inducible FGF21 in red and the control, so less FGF21 in black. This is a survival curve. So the more up and to the right that they are, the longer that they live. Keep in mind, all else is equal. So nutrition, exercise, and so on. We clearly see the FGF21 has a strong longevity effect, about a 26% increased lifespan, which is pretty substantial. Okay, good. I wasn't lying that this hormone is a longevity hormone, but I find these data actually pretty boring because there's so much more that this hormone does and exactly how is it leading to these longevity effects? Well, for one, if we look at their body weight and body composition, the red is the FGF21 overexpressing group, we see their body weight is much lower over their lifespan than the control condition. And beyond that, they're leaner indicated by reduced body fat, as well as more lean mass, which includes muscle. So they live longer, they're leaner and more muscular. And there's even reports of them flexing in the mirror and winking at the married mice's wives. Unconfirmed though. But what if I throw this on for you? We're looking at total food intake and we even see them eating more 
than the control. So hold on. They're living longer, looking better, and they get to eat more. Sign me up. The reason for that is because their metabolism ramps up as seen on the right side here. It's much higher during the waking hours. I know it says dark there. Mice are a lot more active at night. A lot of changes and not tiny ones either big changes. And beyond that, the FGF21 group also experienced significant liver protection, meaning an unhealthy liver can accumulate fat inside the liver cells called steatosis. But as we can literally see, we have microscope images of the liver sections on the right, and the white is fat. Clearly, the bottom image indicates significantly less liver fat. This is further confirmed by looking at liver enzymes in the blood. These are leaked out of stressed and dying liver cells. So the lower, the better. And again, we see improvements. Also related, when testing things like insulin resistance, in this case measured by a common test called an oral glucose tolerance test, an OGTT there, in this experiment, the subject consumes a regulated amount of glucose, so sugar, and the researchers are measuring how quickly the sugar is then cleared from the bloodstream. So as we can see here, the red line returns to baseline quickly, which indicates reduced insulin resistance or better insulin sensitivity, as it's insulin that generally needs to be there to clear the blood sugar into the cells and out of the blood. In fact, we'll return to this because I don't want to promise anything, but there might be some human data on this exact same thing. No promises, but uh, you know, there's one more thing that I want to show you, maybe the coolest thing, and then we should come to understand how FGF21 actually causes these benefits. Okay, the coolest data is here, and I realize this looks like a lot, but it's simple to read. We're looking at the genetic differences in visceral fat, a generally considered harmful form of fat in the body that sticks around our organs. The genes are on the left side. You don't need to know them individually. Just notice the color difference between the control and the FGF21 overexpressing group, TG. The more red, that means there's greater gene expression. It seems pretty clear there's huge gene changes between the two groups in this fat type. So what's going on here? Well, the researchers did a lipolysis assay, which means that they stimulated fat cells to release fat molecules into the bloodstream. This tells them that if the fat cells are behaving differently, which they are here because under the same conditions, the FGF21 overexpressing group releases less fat molecules, so NIFAs or non-esterified fatty acids. That feeds into the changes in the body fat gene signatures because it's generally recognized that if fat cells have a greater capacity to keep fat inside the cell, that means there's less spillover into surrounding organs. Remember the liver that we looked at earlier? Well, remember how it was packed with fat? It's healthier for fat molecules to be stored in fat cells than other organs called ectopic fat. So if there's less release, when stimulated, that's a benefit. That, of course, also affects insulin resistance in general health because ectopic fat in our organs reduces insulin sensitivity because these fats interact with important signaling enzymes inside our cells. Beyond that, they can be turned into a harmful molecule like ceramides. Ceramides are bioactive molecules, meaning that they actually interact with components of our cells and change the behavior of the cell. They have multiple functions, including positive, but as signaling molecules, they can contribute to inflammation, cell death, and have a direct role in inhibiting the insulin cascade in the cells, contributing to insulin resistance. So when we look at the levels of ceramides inside fat tissue here, we're again looking at the heat map with varying size ceramide molecules on the left side. And we see the concentration cut dramatically in the FGF21 condition, sometimes half or even a fifth of the control condition. And the reasons for that is here. These are a bunch of ceramide enzymes that are involved in the production of ceramides inside the cell. So not all of them decrease, but certain key enzymes are reduced, meaning that FGF21 reduces the gene expression for the production of these ceramide enzymes. But that's in the adipose tissue, the fat cells themselves. There are significant reductions in blood ceramides as well here. The blue bars are the FGF21 overexpressing condition. Okay, so FGF21 has widespread protective effects and leads to some 
pretty remarkable improvements in health, body composition, longevity, and more that we haven't even gone over. Which, by the way, if you want me to cover much more of the effects of FGF21, like its effects on the immune system, its powerful interaction with another hormone, its ability to mimic anti-aging drugs, as well as a clever way to increase FGF21 naturally beyond what we'll be going over here, I cover all that in the extended version of this video that you're watching. It's included for the Physionic Insiders. If you care about learning all the details along with uh, even more actionable takeaways, check it out. The link's in the description. Oh, and that membership also gives you access to my private podcast, live sessions with me if you want to discuss in more detail, weekly articles with actionable steps, protocols, and much more. I put a lot of work into it. It's also a really great community. Like I said, the link is in the description box. Now, let's bring this back to the human folk and how we can take advantage of this information. Well, as you may have noticed since I said over and over, this particular study was in mice. And beyond that, this was in genetically manipulated mice, known as transgenic mice. It was also in single breed of mice. So we should want this to be replicated, even if there are other studies corroborating pieces of this study. Among those studies, there's a recent human study that actually show similar increases in FGF21. We see the FGF21 stimulating nutrition increases blood FGF21 on the left side. When the nutrition is changed, the body no longer produces FGF21. Don't worry, we'll get into what that nutrition is in a minute. But we don't actually just see increases in FGF21. We actually see some of the same results that we see in mice, like here where researchers are infusing glucose into the veins of participants and seeing how much is cleared out of the blood. So it's a different but more sensitive measure of insulin resistance. The blue lines are the people with the FGF21 in their blood, and we can see there's more glucose infusion needed, meaning that more is cleared out of the tissues, a strong sign of insulin sensitivity. That all is technically still associative data, but that study in humans also showed other evidence to create a direct link, not just an association. I'll link my analysis in the description because there are other things that were similar between the human data and the mouse data that I won't uh, relitigate here. So, how do we increase FGF21 in ourselves? Well, it's actually extremely simple. Reduce your protein intake. Yep, the human study that I referenced did only that. They just reduced protein intake to 9% of total calories, which is quite low, but still well above levels indicated to be unsafe as it meets all of the necessary amino acid requirements. Of course, that's also dependent on the protein source, but we're assuming quality complete protein sources. That said, there are a few cautions that I should outline here. One, the human study was in young, healthy men who did not exercise. Since protein requirements change with activity, it's unknown if it's viable for people who exercise intensely, especially over the long term. Two, as we age into our 60s and beyond, our protein requirements tend to increase. So it may be more detrimental than beneficial to reduce protein that low. We don't know. However, even in the study that we're going over, old mice did not experience as noticeable an increase in metabolism shown here side by side with the young mice that we looked at over earlier. You can see the increase in energy expenditure, so metabolism is blunted. But if you're thinking that FGF21 has no effect in those older, then think again, because they still experience the insulin sensitivity benefits similar to the young. So the FGF21 is still causing some positive effects. Regardless, it would be good to have specific longer term human studies in older individuals to see if the benefits are going to outweigh the cost. So potential lean mass loss as one example. If you're a Physionic Insider, I'm going to go into that in more depth, including some alternatives if interested. Okay, so to button this up, FGF21 is a hormone that's secreted by many cells of the body and there's preliminary data indicating that it extends lifespan, but also improves body weight, body composition, and insulin sensitivity, along with protecting our organs from developing fat inside them. Short-term human studies indicate that consuming a low but still viable protein diet of 9% of total calories stimulates FGF21 in our body. I'd like to see more human studies, especially in older folks, but there's a lot of remarkable effects in humans that I didn't cover, which you can find 
right here. I cover more on the effects of FGF21 in humans. Thanks for nerding out with me, and I'll catch you later.